This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the only one platform to build a beautiful online presence for your business. Hello and welcome to my art channel. I know that there's quite a few new people to my channel uh, as of very recently. I am so grateful for all the new subscribers and I don't know what happened to the last video. It really seemed to have popped off, which is something that hasn't happened to me before. Again, super thankful. Welcome everyone who is new. And in this video, I, as you can see, I'm drawing Wednesday and Enid from the Netflix show once again, mostly because I'm just obsessed with the fashion in the show and because I had so much fun watching it. I, this is actually the first thing that I really knew that I wanted to make fan art of as I was watching the show for the first time. Uh, the snoot thing, if you know what I'm talking about, like the little scarf things that they have matching. I thought that was just the cutest um, little detail that they had in the show and I thought they looked really cute too as a fashion choice. So that's definitely something I wanted to draw. And so here I am doing that. And I am showing you the entire process of this illustration. And as you can see, this one is digital. And also before I go on, um, last time I did this fan art, I didn't really think too hard about when I was going to make a print. So it was a bit of a mess. But for this one, the print pre-order will be up in my shop as I post this video. So if you're interested in a print version of this, you can find it in my shop. But anyways, yeah, I was super into the cute little dynamic that they had. Just like, I don't know, skulking around looking for evidence and just like trying to solve mysteries. I know that in the show, Enid wasn't particularly into it, but I still thought it's a really cute thing. And so I had this idea for this illustration that is kind of like a caught in the act of just snooping around where they're not supposed to um, type of thing. And that's what I went with. And so first... I wanted to tell you guys about the tools that I'm using to make this illustration. So uh, if some of you have been watching my channel for a while, you'll probably know that I go back and forth quite a bit between digital illustration and traditional illustration. And I do like both very equally. Um, I was a little bit turned off from digital art like in the last month or so just because of all the AI stuff that was happening but you know I'm kind of over it and I really wanted to go back and make a full digital illustration which is something I haven't done in a little while and more specifically I really really missed painting backgrounds but before I well I mean if you can call this like painting a background but whatever I'll talk about the background more later but First of all, for the tools, as you can see, I am drawing on a tablet screen laptop and this laptop is the Galaxy Book Pro 360. I have a full review video of this laptop um, down if you scroll like through my uh, older videos. I really, really love this laptop and I still um, use it to this day, obviously. And I admittedly will say that I don't draw on it super often. But recently, I really wanted to start using it for art again because I find that sometimes I just start to associate certain setup, like certain work setups with a certain mentality. So in my particular case, I'm talking about the fact that I use a very large Cintiq uh, Pro screen to work on digitally and so I have come to associate it with work with like hard work and hours upon hours of sitting there and just slaving away I mean not slaving it is fun but you know you probably know what I mean so something that I've been kind of chasing for the past couple of years is just trying to recapture the vibe of what it feels like to draw for fun and sometimes when you don't have a uh, an option to change your environment and like change your work setup it's difficult to switch back and forth between doing like client work and doing stuff for fun and so i it occurred to me that maybe if i just use the laptop even if i'm sitting on the same table like if i use the laptop to draw on instead of the cintiq it will it will feel different and maybe i will be able to uh, have more fun drawing and it totally worked it really kind of reminded me of when I used to use a tablet laptop, like a, an old Lenovo laptop that was really shitty and old. Um, this was years ago when I went to college. Um, I used that for all my art and I had so much fun 
uh, and I did so much work on that laptop. This kind of had a similar vibe, it took me back a little bit, and yeah, I'm really glad that I decided to make this little switch because I can totally see myself doing this way more often now. Um, it almost like dispelled some sort of block that I had with drawing for fun um, digitally. So anyways, the thing that's really crucial to use with this Galaxy Book Pro, in my opinion, is a wireless Bluetooth external keyboard because when you turn this laptop into a tablet that you can draw on on the screen it basically hides the keyboard and so it's for for the use of like shortcuts and whatnot it's super important to have an external keyboard on the side and it's actually way more um convenient that way anyways because you can pretty much put the keyboard anywhere sometimes i even put it on my lap when i work so um yeah that's a great uh addition to have to the setup and I will say it's not impossible to work without it. It is just way easier though. So I would totally recommend getting that. It's not super expensive either. I think I got it for like 50 bucks or something off of Amazon. And the one other thing that I wanted to mention is the stylus that you see me use in this video is actually from a Wacom One tablet. I didn't even know that it was compatible with this laptop until somebody left a comment on youtube so that was super helpful and i do think after testing out the stylus versus the one that the laptop came with i do prefer this one because it does seem to have just like a little bit of a better shape obviously because it was designed specifically for i don't know long-term usage i would assume and i think it has a little bit of um I think there is a bit of a difference in terms of the pressure sensitivity, though I can't be sure because I may have messed with the, the original stylus that comes with this laptop by replacing the nib. So yeah, I have no idea. Anyways, so now that I have explained the tools, I just want to briefly um, tell you guys about this video sponsor. Squarespace. With social media getting increasingly oversaturated and tough to keep up with, I think it's very important to have a portfolio website to showcase my work in a organized and professional way to potential clients. I've always found the idea of building and upkeeping a website to be super daunting because I don't have a lot of free time and I have even tried and given up to do this in the past, but using Squarespace has actually really changed the game for me. It was super easy and fast to build this portfolio website using Squarespace's engine, which is both simple and very intuitive. And I truly appreciate how quick it is to make big overall changes to the color scheme and other design elements. I recently decided to expand my portfolio by adding sections and organizing different types of work, which I was able to do in minutes using the pages sidebar. And of course, I have to mention the automatic image scaling, a wonderful feature that makes the gallery look very nice, even if the images are all different sizes. To start building your own website, you can head over to squarespace.com and get right to it for free. Once you put the website together and are ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, now back to the video. So, uh, I really like the setup and I've explained the tools that I use and now I will tell you a little bit about what kind of inspired me to make this illustration in the first place. So as I've mentioned before, um, as I was watching the show, I just really like this concept. I really like the costumes, but also I started to feel like most of my illustrations, like the majority of stuff that I draw these days always lacks a background i seem to just be stuck on drawing characters on a white background over and over again like obviously i draw different poses and different characters and such and i do switch back and forth between digital and traditional but even my client work as of like the last few years always involves just drawing characters in a white background and I really, really love seeing illustrations that include a background and have some sort of scene happening. And I realized that I haven't done anything like that in years. And I do have a bit of a mental block when it comes to drawing illustrations with full backgrounds on my own, like outside of a client requirement or some sort of work requirement. And I was kind of thinking about that and I realized that it's a really, really stupid um just like fear or misconception that i have about my work because it's not that i 
I'm afraid of drawing backgrounds. It's just that when I think about it, I feel slightly uncomfortable and I don't really know where to start. And so I opt for the usual stuff that I'm just familiar with, which would be my comfort zone, I guess. And because I'm not 100% sure how backgrounds are gonna go, I'm like too lazy to experiment with it in Photoshop and too afraid to experiment with it in traditional work because I can't undo um, and, you know, I might ruin an illustration that way. But anyways, long story short, I have actually drawn a million backgrounds back in the day when I was working on a graphic novel called Grimoire Noir. And actually, I brought it up because the approach that I use in this illustration is very, very similar to how I drew every single panel in that graphic novel. And there's like, like, I don't know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of panels in it. And most of them do have some sort of background. And so I have plenty of experience with this. And just thinking about it that way made me realize that it really doesn't have to be as daunting as I think it is. And so when I was starting this illustration, I just literally approached it in the exact same way that I would approach drawing every single panel for that comic. And so at the beginning, I, as you can see, I drew a very like simple, like very simplistic sketch and that didn't even include like the outfits or anything. So it was just to establish the pose. And I didn't bother putting any details whatsoever into the faces because I just wanted to capture like a quick facial expression just to get the gist of the emotion that the character has on their face to establish the mood of the scene. And that's about it. It's actually usually looks really funny. And that, that's one of my favorite things about um, doing the initial sketch uh, thumbnails or like layouts for the comic when I worked on it. But anyways, yeah, after that, I did a second pass of the sketch which was the more um resolved pass in which i figured out a lot more of the outfit shapes like all the i don't know everything that was left kind of too sketchy and at the stage i also drew a detailed pass on the faces and because there was already an under sketch it was actually very easy to draw the faces in very cleanly and I know that it might seem like a redundant step because the sketch, the second sketch is actually pretty clean, generally speaking. Um, so you might think like, why didn't I just ink over the first sketch? But um, the reason is because I like to take as many steps as I can within reason to just really resolve the shapes of every single um, aspect of the drawing. So like all the clothing and like the limbs, all the anatomy shapes. When I say shapes, it kind of like really feeds into the silhouette of the poses of the drawing as well. And I wanted the silhouette to kind of lean a little bit. So there was a lot of specific things that I wanted to capture. And those are the kinds of things that I don't like to resolve in a semi, like in a final stage. So like say, for instance, if I, if I were to ink right after the first pass of the sketch, it would take me much, much longer to get it to a point where I like it rather than to just draw a second sketch and then ink easily over top of that to further solidify the shapes and um, use that uh, approach. And this is kind of how I tend to approach most of my illustrations and even very similar to my traditional art. But anyways, so I, I brought this up because this is, a very similar um, workflow that I used for the Grimoire Noir comic that I worked on and I just kind of roughly indicated what I had in mind for the background and at that point I already had a lighting scenario in mind so I, I knew I wanted it to look like there was a flashlight sort of um, uh, illuminating the two characters up on the top of the illustration so having that in mind uh, was enough to just put all the flat colors down as if it's a normal illustration. So what I'm trying to explain is that when I have a different or like a unique or specific lighting in mind, I really don't need to incorporate it from the beginning. I know that a lot of people who do digital paintings actually do a sketch or like a rough version of the coloring and the lighting and such at the very start, but actually i never do that and i just tend to hold the image in my head because i really prefer a more planned out approach to coloring and adding lighting 
which is basically like shading, I suppose. Anyways, in, in a really layered way. So I will put all my shadows on one layer um, after putting down all the local colors as they would be in any lighting scenario. So for instance, here, I'm just picking colors without any awareness of how dark the image is going to be or like what time of day it is or anything like that because it's super easy to just throw an overlay on top of the basic colors afterwards um to create that effect instantly which is the like i know that it's less it's not it's not really an organic approach and it's a little more calculated but i think it's way easier for me to do that because when I use a more, or when I've tried using a more organic approach in the past to like preemptively try to pick a bunch of colors and like kind of do a rough underpainting before getting to the final coloring, it always felt for to me like when I wanted to make a change, the thing would just start falling apart. Like what if I wanted to make another change and then I would have to change all the colors and then slowly it just became this weird mess that I couldn't really control. Whereas in this case, because the base, the basic colors that I'm using, like the local colors for every element in the drawing, would be the same under any lighting scenario. Once I'm finished with this step, I don't have to re redo this step anymore um, at any given point later. So I can just experiment with different lighting on top of this layer where like just leaving the flat image untouched and that's the kind of security that i need in order to experiment with the lighting a little bit later on um i really hope that this explanation made sense to you guys because to me personally this approach is way easier to handle than trying to paint something and then just like slowly painting repainting and changing colors and whatnot like that kind of thing is way too chaotic for me i really really prefer this type of clear cut approach and also with this approach it's very easy to modify the background as well and etc i'm sure that's like self-explanatory but yeah back to backgrounds like I wanted to kind of take it easy and start with something very simple. So for this one, I knew that I kind of wanted to like hint at some grass or something that maybe it's like an outdoor scene, but generally I didn't have anything super complicated in mind at all because I just wanted to ease myself into adding uh, backgrounds to my character illustrations. And I actually really, really like how this one turned out. It's like way more interesting for me to look at because having even the most simple background scenario in mind really opens up the opportunities for interesting lighting. Whereas every time I draw characters just floating on a white sheet, like just the white paper with no background in mind whatsoever, it kind of really constricts what kind of lighting I can put them under because I always opt for something super simple, like no apparent or strong light source, just like a generic type of illustration. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's a, it is very generic and I tend to go for the generic thing pretty often. So this was really different from that and made it way more engaging for me to work on this image because yeah, the lighting was very different and it was very specific so yeah um i do have a part in this video at some point where i switch to the cintiq screen for a little bit and i'm just gonna explain to you guys why i did that so at some point when i was approaching the finish line when it came to the flat colors and when i already put in some background gradients just to like create a finished flat image that I the next step would be to add um shadows in the lighting I realized that I don't actually have all the brushes that I like to utilize on this laptop and for that reason I just switched to the Cintiq uh the Photoshop on my Cintiq or slash my main computer um so that I could do that uh eventually later I went back and like found all my brushes and you know like migrated everything so I now I have everything on the small computer or like the, the Galaxy Book Pro but at the at the time I did not so I had to switch to the Cintiq and specifically what I didn't have was the my favorite blender tool so I use this blender that kind of scatters um what is it called I think it's like something dot blender anyways so 
a lot of people actually ask me about this sometimes and I so I want to take a minute to just tell you guys what brushes I use and where I got them from I think things have changed since then just because I've been trying for so long like I got this brush back at least I will say like oh my god maybe even like eight years ago or something like maybe approaching 10 years ago I'm not sure but my favorite brush pack is called Kyle's Mega Pack and I bought it like I said a very long time ago and there's a ton of brushes from it that I still use to this day and unfortunately I don't know if it's available anymore because I know that since then Kyle uh, Webster who is the creator of these Photoshop brushes has partnered with Adobe but I think the brushes that he made are actually available in Photoshop when you buy it or like when you use it or whatever so I'm sorry I can't be of any more help when it comes to those brushes but I do think that they're available and I do think that the blender that I use is among them somewhere but that's all I will say um aside from that some of the brushes that I really like are Shi Yun Kim's brushes you can just find them very easily by googling his name um they're very simple brushes and uh, I think the brush pack only comes with a few, uh, but to me, it's worth it because I use them all the time. I really like the texture that they have, and so I would highly recommend those. And lastly, I use a ton of brushes from Ahmed Aldori. His are free. You can also find them super easily by Googling. And there's a lot to explore there. I haven't even tried all of them because there's just so many, but there's a few that I like to use for sketching and whatnot. And like for texture, for the big um, textured blobs that you see me put in the background at some point here, I use one from Ahmed Alduri's brush pack. So those are the brushes and yeah. As you can see, my typical approach is I like to do a harder edge shadow pass first and then blend out edges where I see fit. It's pretty straightforward. I typically go about it in kind of, um, I don't know, I'll just go back and forth and see what looks best. And I do all my shadows on one layer, as you probably know from my previous videos and if you wanted more detailed breakdowns on how I use layers you can definitely find that in other digital videos that I have but yeah I like to put all the shadows on one single layer that I start to multiply that co that goes over top of all the previous work that I've done and I typically send, uh, set it to like 55% opacity and just pick a very dark color in this particular case I picked like a dark purple or something it's almost black, but it does have a tint, so as you can see, it's bluish. But I knew that I was going to change the color of the shadows later on, which you will see me do. And I will often just use one color to shade everything in and then add depth later by locking the pixels on the shadow layer and then just changing color in certain parts of it. You will also see me do that <laughs> in the video. Um, I'm not gonna get like super into detail about how I go about this because I am planning to at some point make like a very detailed tutorial for Skillshare or something like that for this particular method but that is the basic gist and then once I put down all the shadows and it looks kind of close visually close to what I'm looking for I finish off an image with a final layer or sometimes a couple of layers on top of everything that is, that is just a simple paint over so I will just go in with a brush and a color picker and just enhance a bunch of details wherever I see fit so usually the kind of things that I will work on at that stage are like any stray hairs that might come out of the shape that I initially had locked in with the lines and any sort of um, darker shadow enhancement I will also do on this layer above everything else because obviously doing all the shadows on one layer has its downsides because if you set it to a certain opacity it can't go any darker than that of course but often if you want more depth you do need to have very dark areas in your painting so I always find that like I can picture pretty well which areas I would presumably want to enhance afterwards and I don't sweat it too much when I do the initial shadow pass because I know I can do as many shadow passes as I please and if I want to get really detailed sometimes I even do two or three 
shadow passes on multiply. But in this particular case, I just did the one and then I did all the rest of the enhancements or paint over on just another layer that is not set, set to multiply or anything, just like a very simple um, paint over layer. And yeah, I wanted to include different types of, um, I want to introduce different colors into the shadow essentially. And as you can see, I added a little bit of a blue um, and I think that really actually created a pretty cool effect. And this is what I mean by there are so many fun things that you can do if you just introduce a very simple background scenario. And I'm super happy that I was able to finally take a step in that direction after just thinking about how much I want to do more finished um, scene illustrate like illustrations that depict some sort of action or, you know. Um, yeah, and this was a great start as far as I'm concerned, and I'm really looking forward to and excited to do more illustrations like this, uh, specifically for uh, my own comic characters. So I'm already working on one right now, actually. I'm pretty excited to finish it. But yeah, um, I'm really happy I got all the process on camera for this one. And like I said, if you like this illustration, I do have a print pre-order set up in my shop and I will most likely fulfill those like within the next maybe week and a half or something like that. Probably like a couple of weeks timeline. I just want to take a little bit of time off during the holidays and then I will do all the orders from my shop. So thank you so much for listening and thank you for subscribing to everyone who's new. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.